Hi, how are you? I hope you're doing okay. Today I want to talk about this subject of plot style tables. Because in fact most of us, when we draw in AutoCAD, we use different colours in our lines in order to determine what layers we're using. We can just look at the drawing, see the colour, know what layer we're actually using right now or what layer we're wanting to use. The question com comes up though, how can we plot these, this drawing which is full of colours in black and white, which is usually what we want for a technical drawing. It's very easy, we just have to use our plot style tables. And AutoCAD actually comes in pre-installed with quite a number of these. So in this video, I want to show you firstly what these predetermined plot style tables are based on color, and also how we can make our own in order to do things in a special way. For example, we want everything in black and white, but one particular layer should be in colour. Or we want to have a plot style table which helps us to determine the line weight in our drawing. So line weight or other characteristics, in fact other properties, by colour. It's really very easy and in this video you can see how. As mentioned in the introduction, it's quite typical for us AutoCAD users to use colours in our drawings, not because we want the drawings to be happy and pretty, but because of course we want to discern between different layers. If I look into my Layer Properties Manager, for example, we can see that I've used a number of colours to distinguish between different layers. How can we then use our plots style tables to produce drawings on paper or as PDFs which actually fulfill our technical desire to have things mostly in black and white. Or otherwise, how can we use plot style tables to define our line thicknesses? Well, let's just have a look and see first what AutoCAD makes available to us from the box, as it were. I'll go to the layout and do a page setup. We'll name it first after the plotter and paper size. I'll be using the standard AutoCAD PDF printer and we'll just take a normal A4 size paper. No need to worry about that. First the plotter, now the paper size. What do we want to plot? Let's take window, 00 for bottom left, enter 297,210 for the top right corner. Fit to paper, plot transparency, Everything else can stay as it is. And now we can look at our plot style tables. If I leave it as none, then basically what you see is what you get. So if anything's done with color, that's what it will look like. You can check that on the preview. There it is. Very pretty, but not desperately technical. AutoCAD offers us a number of plot style tables. ACAD CTB is in fact pretty much the same as no style table. Basically, a, the color and properties of the objects are left unchanged. So if I make that our current one, preview, exactly the same as it was before. You may well ask, well, what is the point of that? And we will actually see that you can use it as a basis for your own plot style tables. I'll use it for one where everything is colored with the exception of the first 10 colors, which the plot style table will convert into black and white, well, black lines for the white paper. And I'll assign different line thicknesses and according to the colors, but that we'll look at later. I don't want to discuss all of these in detail, just the ones I found particularly useful myself. For example, grayscale, what does that do? Well, basically, um, it makes everything black, which is black. Uh, everything colored is then changed into a, into a gray, depending on the intensity of the color. Now, there is an exception here in my drawing. I don't know if you noticed that, but this line has remained brown. Why is that? Well, in actual fact, that is because I haven't used one of the 255, we could call them standard, AutoCAD colors, the index colors, to define this particular layer, but I've used a true color. The same would apply for colors taken from the color books. Now I'll take over this particular setting, say OK. We'll make that into our current page setup. Now everything's pretty much as it should be. When I look at my preview, yep, as it was before, 
with this pair of lines in brown. Now, what can I do about that? Why is that? As I said, it's because I haven't used index colors to define that particular layer. This is, in fact, when I click on it, as you can see, it's a, an RGB color defined by these three sets of numbers. Now, if we have used a drawing template which is according to color, then we can't use our plot style tables to convert these colors into other colors or into black lines. So what do we do? Well, we have a number of possibilities. The simplest one would actually be to change this from a true color into an index color. So I could pick an appropriate color here. Um, I would say that's pretty close, just a little bit darker. I could then say I'll, I'll stick to color 35. And then what I could do would be to add a little bit of transparency to it. Let's uh, put it up to 60 and it will be very similar to how it was before. So that would be one option. The other option would in fact be to say, well, let's forget plot style tables according to color and we'll go to the named plot styles. What on earth do I mean by that? If we make a new drawing, usually we will use a template. I mean, actual fact, usually we'll have an office template, but they will be based originally on one of the templates which we received from AutoCAD. Now this one, AutoCAD ISO, is actually the standard template to start off with at least for millimeter drawings. And because nothing else is found in the name, that is actually the template where it's using color plot styles. Now if you would take this one, also AutoCAD ISO, but named plot styles, then you can actually do a lot more with these plot style tables. In other words, you can actually redefine the colors, even if they're done as true colors or from color books. But I'm just, in this particular video, I'm just wanting to explain about plot style tables based on color. Back to our page setup manager. Let's look at the other plot style tables which are available. Let's modify that. Grayscale, as we saw, is black and white. And now, in fact, that I've changed the color, this, these two lines as well are gray. We also have the possibility to use monochrome, which is everything is black and white. Or we have these various screening options, which basically leave everything as it was, but with the colors a lot more pale. Why would you want that? You could well ask. Well, it's basically so that we can use these colors as background and superimpose upon that the things which we want to actually highlight. Those we would then do with strong black and white lines. What about the following? Let's put this to monochrome. Look at the preview. What is though if we want just one layer to have color by way of highlight? So for example, I have a revision cloud here. Maybe I would like to have such objects red. So everything else is black and white, as you would expect, but these revision clouds in red. What we can do is to look at the layer of our revision cloud object. So I'll say OK here, OK, close. Revision cloud, that's here. That's actually been drawn with a color 230, a sort of dark pink. So what we can do is the following. Back to our page setup manager. We want to modify this one. And what we'll do is we'll use this plot style table monochrome as a basis. Save as, we'll call it monochrome except color 230. And then we go to color 230 and say that isn't going to be black, but we could use the object color, this dark pink, or we could even say red or any other color which we wanted. Let's leave it at red though. Save and close, set the right plot style table, preview, everything black and white except for this one, which is red. That's one option. Everything black and white except this one or however many colors you like by way of highlight. What I would like to show now 
is how we can set up a plot style table which leaves everything of the 255 in their own color with the exception of the first 10 because I want to use those to define black lines with various thicknesses based on the color. What I'll do is I'll take ACAD CTB as our base. We'll save that under the name Standard with Line Thickness. So when we look into our table, we'll see that all of these colors at the moment, they have the characteristics defined here, use object line weight, use object whatever. So it's just what you see is what you get, no change. I'm going to use the first 10 colors though as my black lines. In actual fact, I only use the first nine, but 10 I have used on occasion for other things. So it's nice to have the odd one or two in reserve. Now, why have I chosen these ones? Well, because these are the clearest to see what color they are. I don't want to have to distinguish between this red and, and this red or these colors. That's, that's more than my sad eyes can manage. But distinguishing between these colors is actually fairly easy because I'm going to use these to define my line strengths. But firstly, I define them all as black. And now I'm going to define my line strengths. 1 and 7, line weight 0, 2, yellow and blue, they're going to be 0, 3. This cyan color, I have that as something between the two of those, 2, 5. Then green I'll have as 4, and magenta as 5. And the other three here, I will define those as 2. I can change that though if I if I want to. Save and close. We're going to use that one as well. Standard with line thickness. OK. OK. Close. How does it look then in our preview? Yeah, so we can see here, this one was originally red. It's now relatively thin. This one was blue. That's 0, 3. Here we have it something thicker, 0, 5 and so on. Now, why would I want to do that? You may well ask. Let's pop to the model area and isolate this particular layer. This layer is existing, so that's the part of the building which I've imagined already exists before I actually put in my windows. And in actual fact, I have here lines which have different line thicknesses depending on what they are. So these lines here in magenta. That's the thickest line I've used, 0, 5. That's where I've cut through construction objects, so concrete and, and wall. Here I have the elevation of the side of the opening, so that's a lot thinner than this. So I've, I just have one layer for my objects which are part of the existing building, but through the use of color I can define my line weight. So that was it for just now. But if you'd like to make any comments about the video or you have indeed any questions about this or any other videos, feel free to write the, the comments in at the bottom below the video. Or you can contact me directly over my website. The information for that will appear roughly about now. But also at the end of the video, you will find a link where you can just click on it and you'll come straight to my website. You will also find a link to subscribe to my channel. And I can sincerely recommend that because then in this way you can keep in touch with developments in AutoCAD, different subjects which I will deal with as I upload videos from time to time. So thanks very much for watching and see you soon.